Alright, lesson 7.5, solving rational equations. So this time we're dealing with equations, hence we have equal signs. Um, the last couple lessons we've been dealing with uh, expressions. Alright, so move to an equation here. To solve an equation with rational coefficients, the fractions can be cancelled. By multiplying both sides of the equations by a common denominator. We'll give you an example of one here. Let's say I had uh, x divided by 12 minus 2 thirds is equal to a quarter, something like so. Well, what do we see? We see that your lowest common denominator, a number that 12, 3, and 4 both go or all go into is, uh, is 12. So if you write everything over 12 right here, so I'm going to change this 2 thirds to be then 8 over 12 when you multiply by 4, and this to be 3 over 12 when you multiply like so, what you can do is you can basically go now and get rid of your fractions like so. Okay, so your question just looks like that. Now we have x minus 8 is equal to 3 or x is equal to 11. All right. So what I'm going to do in all of these examples here is I'm going to try my best to go and uh, get rid of the fraction. Okay. So just like all of them, I've given you guys a couple steps. Uh, step one is, has been like all the others. I want you to uh, identify your non permissible values. Then you're going to solve the equation. And then this one is uh, something that's new for these solving these equations. that you got to check out for this word, extraneous root. You've seen this earlier in the year. We have to make sure that uh, your solution matches up with the non-personal values that you got uh, up here in step one. Okay, Because it's possible you could get, uh, you might say right away that x cannot equal a certain number. And then at the end, you actually get out that number. Okay, So we got to check for that. So a couple examples, uh, pretty short lesson. Here we go. Okay, so example one here, solve each equation. Uh, what I would first do is try to figure out what my NPVs are. Uh, so non personal values for this one's fairly easy. Just looking at these three denominators, you'll notice that x cannot equal zero. Okay. Now with my LCDs, well, what's a number that 2x, 5, and 10x both, go, or all three go into? Well, we're looking for a number that 2, 5, and 10 go into, so that's 10, and then we take the highest exponent we have, which is an x. So I'm first going to go and write everything over 10x. Right. The 1 is already over the 10x, so it's good to go. You need to look at the 2x. What do you multiply 2x by in order to get 10x? Multiply it by a 5, so 1 times the 5 is 5. I multiply the um, 5 by a 2x to get 10x, so this will give me a 4x. At this stage, what you can do is you can just cancel out the denominators there, and you have what we have, like so. Uh, at this stage, what am I going to do? I'm going to go and I will move the 5 to the other side of the equation, so we have negative 4x is equal to negative 4. And lastly, when you divide by negative 4, we end up getting oops, that x equals 1. Okay. At this stage, just check it up here against your restriction. As long as it meets that restriction, then you're good to go. That one does. It passes it. So we are happy, happy. All right, let's deal with the next one, uh, b over here. So first thing I'd start out with is what is your NPV for this one? Um, just like the others, we have x cannot equal 0. Now, let's go and get your LCD. Your LCD, well, this 6 is technically over 1, so we have uh, just 1. And then the highest exponent we have is x squared, like so. So I'm going to write everything over x squared. Like so, the 6 is already good to go. What do you have to multiply this exponent to get x squared? Just an x, so we have 5x. What do you have to multiply this 1 by? You have to multiply it x squared, so we have 6x squared. Now, I will go and uh, cancel out uh, my denominators, so these aren't here anymore. Those are all good to go. And I will bring everything to one side of the equation, because you'll note now I actually have a quadratic. And so when we have quadratics, we've dealt with these a lot this year. We have a bunch of different ways that we can go and uh, deal with these. This one, since the leading coefficient is not 1, I'm going to have to use what I call the AC method. So taking your first term and your last term, multiplying them together, you get negative 36. Numbers that multiply to give you negative 36, that have a sum of negative 5 or negative 9 and a positive 4. So this will break up like so. I'll write this as negative 9x plus 4x minus 6 is equal to 0. What can you factor from the first terms? You can factor out a 3x, giving you 2x minus 3. And over here, to make this one the same, make it also a 2x minus 3, what am I going to factor out? I'm going to factor out a 2, it looks like. So your two factors, one being 3x plus 2, you'll set that equal to 0, and 2x minus 3, set that one equal to 0. When you solve both of these, moving the 3 to the other side and dividing by 2, you get x is equal to 3 over 2 as one of your solutions. And the other one, moving the 2 to the other side, you get x is equal to negative 2 
two-thirds. Okay, so the negative two-thirds and the three over two, like so, those both pass your restrictions that we had up here. And as long as you check that, then you are good to move on. Okay. So let's try some on the other page, and we'll uh, kick it up a notch as we get uh, a little bit tougher each time through here. So looking at C, again, start with your MPVs. These would be good questions, again, as always, for you folks to try on your own and then just fast forward and see if you got the same answers as what I'm getting. So from here, what I will do is I will make sure I get myself a common denominator. Um, but first, like I said, we've got to deal with our MPVs. Uh, MPVs, what do we have? We have x cannot equal negative 2 and x cannot equal 3. All right. So we should be getting good with those. Now I'm going to go and get myself a common denominator. What is your LCD for a question like this? Well, your LCD is basically just the two denominators that you have. So you're going to note that the denominators, I basically multiply the left-hand side by what it's missing. It's missing an x minus 3. And I multiply the other side by what it's missing, which is a, what do we have here? It's missing a x plus 2. Now at this stage, basically these all cancel out. So now you just have the numerators. We have negative 3x and minus, sorry, plus 9 is equal to 2x squared plus 4x. Now I will gather all my like terms onto the right side of the equation. Why I put it on the right side here, as you probably guess, is because my x squared term is positive. When you do this, we have 2x squared plus 7x minus 9, like so. Now using the AC method, we have A times C is negative 18, so negative 18 here. Numbers that multiply to give you uh, negative 18 that have a sum of 7 are positive 9x and the negative 2x. And so what can we factor here? We can factor out a x. And what are we left with? We're left with 2x plus 9. And if we factor out a negative 1 here, we're also left with 2x plus 9. So when you uh, set these equal to one another, we have 0 is equal to x minus 1 as one of your solutions, and 2x plus 9 is also equal to 0. And when you solve each of these, we have a solution as x equals 1, and x equals a negative 9 over 2. Again, check these against your restriction. Our restriction here for this one was x could not equal, uh, what was it, negative 2 and 3, and it meets both of those, so we are good to go. Uh, the next one here. Before I get uh, cooking with my MPVs, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go and factor this, right, and then see what we have after that. So when we deal with this, we have 7x minus 15 all over x plus 3 and x minus 3. Notice that that is a difference of squares, we call that. From here, I will deal with my MPVs. So what can we not have? You cannot have x equal to negative 3 for this one, and positive 3 for the other. So we have plus or minus 3. And since this one's also 3, then we're rolling. All right, uh, common denominator for this one. Well, basically, all you have to do is you just have to multiply this side of the equation. This one's kind of unique. You just have to multiply it by an x plus 3. All right, and this one by an x plus 3. And so notice that I've saved all that work. Now I can cancel all that out. I have 7x minus 15 is equal to x times x is x squared x times 3 is 3x, negative 2 times x is a just a positive x left over. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. All right, when I gather my like terms here, I'll move everything to the right side so that I can have the leading coefficient positive. When I move the 7x over, I have negative 6x, and when I add 15 to it, I have a positive 9. And this factors out quite nicely, like so. Numbers that multiply to give you 9 would be 3 and 3. Since we have a negative 6, we'll go negative, negative. And that tells me that x equals 3. Okay. Now, this is a problem right here. Okay. And we probably expected that we get one of these. Since it does not match up with my MPVs right there, I basically said originally when this question started that x couldn't equal plus or minus 3. And I found out that x did equal 3. And so that's a problem, right? So we would say that um, this is what we would call right here an extraneous root. So extraneous root. And then we can say, therefore, we'd have no solution for something like this. Okay. Let's move on to our last example here, E. E, you see, we have quite the doozy for you. Uh, we got uh, three different expressions like that. Um, quite, the, quite the question. So uh, what would I start with? Well, for this one, I'm going to go and I'm going to factor everything that I can. So 
I have x plus 1 all over x plus 6. So notice I say factor because once I've factored it all, then I can determine my non-personal values a little bit easier. So factoring this one, I have numbers that multiply to give you 24 that have a sum of 10, being positive 6 and positive 4. I can see now that my NPVs are going to work out fairly nice right here. We get that x cannot equal from the first one, 6. x cannot equal negative 4. Oops, I should have said negative 6 and negative 4. And then from this one, they would have been the same. All right, so now from there, I need to, again, achieve my common denominator. So what I look at is I see the x plus 1. What is it missing in its common denominator? And you notice I'm going to actually just save some space here. I'm not even going to write it. I'm just going to notice that it's missing an x plus 4. What's the next one missing? This x minus 2, it's missing an x plus 6. And the other one's kind of unique over here on the other side of the equal sign is it's not missing anything, so you just leave it like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the distributive property. I have x squared. x times 4 and an x times 1 gives you 5x's plus 4. Over here I have x squared plus 4x minus 12 is equal to 11x plus 32. Gathering all my terms, I'm going to choose to move them to the left-hand side here. I look, how many x squareds do I have? I have two x squareds. When I add the 5x's and the 4x's, that is 9x, but then I'm going to have to subtract the 11, so that gives me negative 2x. So I'm doing everything kind of in one step here. 4 minus 12 is negative 8, and then I'm going to move the 32 to the other side. Since it becomes a negative 32 and negative 8, I have negative 40. Lastly, Whenever you can here, some people might have started using the uh, AC method for something like this. I would try to notice that uh, you can factor out uh, a 2, all right? And so that'll make things uh, more simplistic for you. And so at this stage, I will now go and factor. What are numbers that multiply to give you negative 20 that have a sum of a negative 1? We have a negative 5 and a positive 4. When you set each of those equal to 0, we get x equals 5 and x equals negative 4. Now I promise on some of your quizzes, I'm going to be kind of nasty to you, is that I'm going to give you both those solutions, but if you picked both of those, you would have gotten it wrong. x, plus, x equals 5, if you check against your restrictions, it's good to go. All right. But the next one here, x equals negative 4, remember that was a non-permissible value, so we would reject this one, like so. Okay, So we cannot have that one, and as a result, we would only have one solution, like I said, and that's the x equals 5. So to recap this lesson, uh, what do you need to do? Basically, make sure you get a common denominator. Once you've gotten a common denominator, you can cancel all that out. Identify your non permissible values originally, and then once you get a solution, make sure you check them against your non permissible value. That concludes this lesson.